Good morning, Jonathan. How are you doing today? Hey, Earl. Good morning. Oh, fantastic. How are you? Fantastic as well. Hey, when you live in Los Angeles, how often do you make it over there to the In-N-Out Burger? Man, I've been going there since I was a kid, so <laughs> quite often. But I don't eat beef anymore, so and I try to eat healthier. So it's been a minute, but it's been a staple for me growing up. I, I love the city of Los Angeles. My, my daughter graduated from UCLA, and just being out there in that city, there's, there's a vibration, and it's not the earthquakes you guys have been doing, but there's a vibration about that city that accepts all creative people. Yes, yes. And, Absolutely. And how how when when you're when you're growing up in LA, how do you deal with that knowing that my god, you you could become that next best thing? Well, you know, and that's a great question and it's so true. LA is a melting pot for creatives and in the industry of course and and the city of dreams. For me, growing up in LA though, it was a very different experience. You know, I grew up in a in a family that was very musical. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom, you know, had had a background in singing and performing and um mm-hmm. as a vocal coach. So for me, it was very natural and normal to go attend shows and to go to the theater and to go to concerts. So it felt kind of just like this is my world and, and the city I live in. And it was always so funny when I would meet like, you know, uh, classmates growing up in school or, you know, you know, peers that, you know, came out here as transplants just for L.A.'s, you know, city of dreams myth. Yeah, because, we've, so, we've... you know, it was always. We've always heard about Hollywood High, and we've always heard about Sunset Strip and stuff like that. Sure, there's great energy in that, but but to live there all the time has just got to be a blessing. Absolutely, a, bl- a blessing, a, a, a huge blessing, because you're immersed in it, and it becomes natural. Yeah. Now, with with your mother, with with her history and stuff like that, which is just amazing, because I mean, she she has just just been so incredible with the background of the, of so many uh, big performers and stuff. Are you writing this down for generations that are going to reach beyond your kids? Man, I am, I am, and you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I can't. For me, you know what, you know what, it's a great question. I, the way that I'm writing this down, in addition to, of course, vlogging and doing all the video stuff that is current up today, but for me, it's about, you know, putting my experiences and my lineage and my creative, mm-hmm. you know, history that's been passed down into my music. I'm a songwriter and, um, a, and, and an artist in, in the, in the, in the sense of I create my own music and so that for me is you know kind of passing down the legacy and she did it as well uh towards the end of her career and background singing and recorded a gospel album and so for me i always said i want to continue that and uh continue recording as much original music as possible it, it, it's a legacy don't you love original music in the way that you, it's, it's not just a piece of your soul but it's the universe and how it moved through you in that moment of now it absolutely, it really truly is an artist's fingerprint, you know, just as unique as their existence. Yeah. Now, you're also a performer on stage because when, when I read that you were part of the Glee musical tour, my God, dude, this is one of those things <laughs> that has changed so many lives and generations. Man, yes. Uh, that is just like, um, and at that time, you know, after growing up, you know, that was such a full circle for me because growing up, you know, watching Glee, loving Glee, mm-hmm. but also kind of living in a Glee lifestyle, you know, as a kid who was musically inclined and always the kid who rather, you know, go and write a song or perform a, a, a scene from a musical as opposed to go and play basketball or, you know, football mm-hmm. on, the, on the outside. So, yeah, definitely. Well, what I loved about Glee was it was the first time in my life that that I, I didn't feel like a nerd for being in chorus class. And because, I mean, when, when I was in high school back in the 70s, oh, he's one of them. And then we started doing yeah. barbershop and it was like, oh, my God, I am one of them. <laughs> What's cool about that, though, is the fact that it really just opened up. It's almost like bridging the gap because you're exactly right. Because even for me growing up and I grew up, you know, years before Glee was a thing when I. When Glee hit big, I was, you know, I just graduated high school. Um, it, 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 it's the type of concept and universal storyline that kind of actually, like you said, it, it kind of bleeds over into real life and has people accepting and loving on the music kid, you know, and uh, and celebrating that. So that's it's really it's really amazing. With, with so much music in your family, but did you still kind of hide it when you started discovering the music in your own personal heart? Because I remember going to my bedroom and not sharing my music with anybody because I was horrified that somebody in my family would judge it. Wow, wow. No, you know, for me growing up, it was always very celebrated. I will say this, in my household, 
it was celebrated. It was, you know, um, you know, nurtured. Of course, my mom, you know, me being kind of like, you know, her, her baby in the sense of like, she has all these clients and then I'm her actual kid that she's kind of training to sing at like four or five years old. But definitely in school, you know, definitely like culturally for me, you know, like growing up and at times bullied for the fact that I'm not out playing sports. I am, you know, perfecting my craft mm -hmm. in a dance studio or perfecting my craft, you know, in, in a rehearsal space with the music director or, you know, pianist. Like I'm really wanting to commit to, you know, performing. And so it definitely at that age, you know, eight nine ten the scene and like it's that's the weird outcast music kid you know so yeah you you do get into a shell at, at, at you know it, it has its has its psychological repercussions that's that's for sure speaking of psychology and things like that don't you love those moments when you can disappear inside your mind those moments for me those moments and then and then the moments where a song writes itself Mm -hmm. are just, um, you know, just lightning in a bottle. I do. I do something therapeutic about both. Yeah, because, I mean, when, when a song comes to you, I remember, I remember writing a song uh, a few years back, and it turned into a book, and it took me two and a half years to write the book, and it's like, because I wasn't done with the song. The song had blown me away so much. It was like, no, I got to write the freaking story. Right, right, right. Because what happens is when you write from a personal perspective, um, it, it it's autobiographical, and so... It, it, it's not the lyrics on the page, you know, mirror your life, become your life, were your life. So it's a it's a journey. It sure is. So being in the studio with Shaka Khan and Fergie and stuff like that, what inspires me about you doing that is that I realize that you've got this big, beautiful voice, but you're also willing to share that big, beautiful voice. Oh, uh, that's so fair, yeah, man. I mean, you know, it's it kind of one of those things for me where, like, I am inspired and I... You know, and, and this this part of growing up in L.A., you know, and being able to work with artists like you named Shaka Khan, Fergie, Sierra, Faith Evans, it's, um, I am a student of my craft. And these are artists that have, you know, done a lot in their life and a lot, they have a lot to, to, to be learned from. And so for me, it's, yeah, I can't help but share and to be immersed in their world and take from them what I can that can only enhance my craft. So when you watch a documentary such as the Aretha Franklin one that just came out with Jennifer Hudson, do you go in there as a student to, to learn more about Aretha Franklin or do you go in there saying, yeah, I've been there. Oh my God, I've been there. You know, I, I, that one specifically, I went in both, uh, you know, very emotional because Aretha Franklin was actually one of my mother's mentors mm -hmm. when she was competing for Miss Black America of 1978 in Los Angeles. Um, so I, you know, I, I have my fair share of Aretha stories. My mom was very, very personally connected to Aretha and, and loved her and, and looked up to her. And so for me, I, I went in as both a student of the craft and then someone who I so felt like, wow, this is something that, you know, is very real and, and still current today with how she bridged the gap musically and all the trials she went through and not even to, not even to mention as a, as a black African American in this country. So yeah. I went in with a whole lot of emotions there, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> you. You being right there in Los Angeles, can you please go down to the Staples Center and tell those Los Angeles Lakers to start getting along with each other and it's all about teamwork? Man. <laughs> I, you, you know you, you know what? You know what, Errol? I will do that next year in February when they ask me to come sing at the game again. Oh. I will definitely. I'll, sh I'll take out to holler at LeBron and let him know. Oh, my God. I mean, to, to sing at, at an L.A. Lakers game, that has to be a, a, a moment that you that you just grow from. Man, I, you know, it is like it's so talk about L.A. And, you know, there there are certain things that happen, even though I'm from this city. Like that, you know, I had the opportunity to sing at the game in March of this year, and I'll be singing at the game on February 2nd of next year. It is it is like a bucket list moment. It is like a pinch yourself moment. <laughs> and it's one of those moments you're like, wow, like, you, you don't take a, a, a for, for granted, even though you're an L.A. native, I'll yeah. say that. Wow. Jonathan, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you, Errol. I love that. You're going to leave the door open for me. Just Absolutely. Just like Silk Sonic is doing for us. Come on I down. I love that. Thank Come you. on down. <laughs> you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you, man. I appreciate you. God bless.